Ladies and gentlemen, it being 0915 hours on this day of June 25th, we shall start the Oxford debate. The motion to be debated is thus. Community engagement should replace student-centeredness in medical education. One more time. The motion to be put before you, the voting audience. Community engagement should replace student-centeredness in medical education. We have two proponents arguing in favor of the motion. Professor Roger Strasser and Professor Rachel Elloway. We have two debaters arguing against the motion. Professor Paul Worley. <laughs> and Professor Sarah Strasser. Each will be given precisely five minutes, no more than five minutes, to argue their case. To set the stage, and in light of recent events, this is a particularly pithy quote, to quote Churchill, democracy is the absolute worst form of government, except for all the others. <laughs> I will be calling on speakers in the following order. Professor Strasser, proponent. Professor Worley, opponent. Professor Elloway, proponent and Professor Strasser, opponent. The floor will then be open for questions or comments. Then, having heard the case put before you, we will put the motion to the floor and you will declare the winner. Thus, the rules having been spoken, we will start the debate. And I will call first on Professor Roger Strasser. And when you're ready to begin, yeah, you may come here if you wish, or, or speak here. However, please know that I will take my gavel with me. <laughs> and at the five minute mark, if you're not finished by then, I will let you know, and you will stop. <laughs> well, thank you very much, uh, Madam Moderator, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, of course, because you're attending a conference on community engaged medical education, you've already made your decision, so I'll just embellish that. I'm actually going to begin, uh, as, as a, a moderator did, with uh, quoting Churchill, uh, Winston Churchill, who said, uh, uh, the farther you look back, into the past, the more clearly you see the future. So I want to go back to uh, the origins of medicine and, and quote the work of two anthropologists, uh, and yes, their names were Tiger and Fox. And, uh, and they talked about uh, the early humans in hunting, hunting groups who gradually became, the hunting groups gradually became different from other primates in that they stayed with and cared for the sick, the weak, and the disabled of the group. And this next section is actually a direct quote. At a slightly higher level of sophistication, the world's first specialists appeared. The medicine man, medicine, despite the alluring claims of other specialisms, is undoubtedly the oldest profession in the world. In return for his services, the medicine man was granted a privilege of not having to hunt and was fed by the group and, uh, and given uh, other gifts. So medicine truly is a sacred privilege uh, bestowed by society. So let's fast forward now to the 20th century and uh, the report of Abraham Flexner, which really set the tone for medical education, which uh, in many ways still pred predominates today. And so, Thanks to Flexno, we had in the 20th century the twin gods of science and technology and, uh, and 
and human beings being seen as body machines and medical education occurring in the, in the teaching hospital, which became the Academic Health Science Centre, this huge, overbearing, uh, intimidating, depersonalising, alienating institution, nothing to do with people. Not about caring for people. Yes, certainly organised uh, to, to suit the, the doctors and the other healthcare providers and, and, and of course, uh, the institution itself. So here we are now in the 21st century, and I would suggest that we have turned the corner, thanks to the report of the, the Global Commission, the Lancet Global Commission, chaired by uh, uh, Julio Frank and, and um, Lincoln Chen, uh, who, who presented a report of the future of health professional education in the 21st century and beyond. And they very clearly made the case uh, that, that health care, health professional education should be focused on people's health needs, should be oriented towards achieving health equity, and that the system, the system of education, the system of health care should be aligned, should be transformed uh, with a focus on, on responding to the health needs of people. This is social accountability. This is the future of health education and health care. And so that brings me to community engaged education. So in community engagement is about interdependent partnerships between community and the institutions, the, the, the education institutions and the health service institutions. And so consistent with social accountability, we put the community in the driver's seat. And it's about the students living in the communities and learning from the communities and their learning being driven by their experiences uh, in, in the communities. So that the graduates are responsive to the health needs of the, of the community they serve. This is returning to the origins of medicine. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that you can see that community engaged education is the one right way. It is the light, it is the future. Now I'm sure that, 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 that our, our esteemed opponents will have you know, one or two piffling points that they'll make, but I know that you will see through those points. And you will recognise that they are talking about that sort of, you know, uh, student-centred education is, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's a custom that's always right. It's about, about these students who are self-absorbed and, 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 uh, and, and you know, it's, 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 really, it's really about, about them. And, and it's really about an education system that produces spoiled brats. I mean, you know, it seems to me that your choice is clear. Are you going to be voting for spoiled brats as the doctors of the future? Or are you going to be voting for graduates who respond to the health needs of their communities? I rest my case. Thank you, Professor Strasser. And now we will hear from the opponent, Professor Paul Worley. You, sir, have five minutes. It was Mother Teresa who said, never worry about numbers. Help one person at a time and always start with the person nearest you. It was Rachel Elloway who said that moral agency is the responsible and moral individual enactment of professional autonomy particularly in the face of institutional ideologies. Axiology, the study of worth and value, is a ray of deontological sunshine in the dark morass of teleological community engagement. <laughs> Surely we are confusing one end, community benefit, with a means, community engagement. And are we ready to throw out a century of constructivist student-centred wisdom from the likes of John Dewey and Jean Piaget that recognises that each learner is unique and brings a different prior knowledge to the learning situation, uses scaffolding and learning through doing to promote problem solving and lifelong learning, and as Carl Rogers said, the only learning which significantly influences behaviour is self-discovered. To quote another famous educator, Roger Strasser, <laughs> when, when you have seen one rural community, you have seen one rural community. In other words, the hundreds of communities we serve are all different. If community engagement is putting the community in the driver's seat, 
how many backseat drivers are we going to have? <laughs> it is a recipe for chaos and a car crash. It exposes community engagement for the critical theorist Trojan horse that it actually is. This mixture of Marxist and, democ and democratic propaganda was debunked last century by none other than Winston Churchill. The best argument against democracy is a five minute conversation with the average voter. If he was a medical educator, he would have said the best argument against community engagement is a five minute conversation with the average medical student. And are we going to preference the views of the mob over our care and understanding for the student, especially a student who is incurring a substantial debt for the privilege of studying to help society and really just wants to learn their anatomy properly. <laughs> Make no mistake, this is just a trendy reincarnation of class warfare. And we know that majority rule without recognition of the intrinsic value of the individual is the rule of the mob. It is tyranny. Just ask the minorities of the world who have had their rights stripped by governments justified by engagement with a community majority. And how is community engagement enacted in most schools? By committees. Community advisory boards, community liaison committees, community consulting forums. And what is the opportunity cost of this? Do we want the precious time of our academics to be used seated at countless committee tables discussing anarchic theoretical propositions put by an articulate minority pretending to represent a community? Or do we want them walking the student common rooms and wards and clinics, tending to the sick and providing individualised feedback to students who they know by name? <laughs> As Gandhi said, if you want to change the world, start with yourself. This was not a reference to an advisory committee. <laughs> and who are the experts in community engagement? The advertising agencies and PR firms of the multinational corporations, the tobacco industry, the sugar industry. Are these really to be our role models? No. <laughs> community engagement allows for the worst of capitalism and selected self-interest on the one hand and socialist jealousy on the other. It implies <laughs> that individual students can gain no sound moral perspectives without being corralled by the creeds and cries of community activists. As Churchill once again said, socialism, and he could have said community engagement, is the philosophy of failure, the creed of ignorance, and the gospel of envy. Its inherent virtue is the equal sharing of misery. <laughs> but the last word, Madam President, I leave to a student, and it is a serious word, a young woman who stood up for the right of every individual girl in Pakistan to gain an education. At the age of 14, for taking this stand, she was shot in the head by the Taliban. Miraculously, she survived. In 2014, Malala Yousafzai became the youngest person to ever be awarded the Nobel Prize. And she said, one book, one person, one child, and one teacher can change the world. I rest my case. Thank you, Professor Worley. Our next proponent is Professor Rachel Ellery. You, madam, have five minutes. Madam President, my esteemed colleagues, I would like to thank Professor Worley for his <coughs> clearly misguided delusional thoughts. <laughs> but we respect the process and we will continue. I'd ask your indulgence to consider the following po points in uh, favour of the decision that we already know that you're going to make. As my colleague pointed out, by being here, you are already making your decision. Community engagement has always been central to the development of medicine and medical education. As Roger so eloquently argued, humans are intrinsically social animals. Individual and collective growth is fundamentally dependent on community engagement. And although we have a tendency to compete and disagree, our very essence is defined by our participation in a social milieu. But we should think about the alternative. How are ways that we are not community engaged? 
Well, to be individually withdrawn is to be a hermit, a recluse. Essentially, it is being like Howard Hughes collecting his toenails in a box. <laughs> in medical education, this is probably not a desirable state of affairs. A withdrawal from scholarship, from evidence, and from rationality. Collective withdrawal, on the other hand, is to take a monastic stance, as we have um, so unfortunately seen with Brexit. This reflects the solitudes of the Academy in some of its worst incarnations. Clearly, these are neither desirable nor sustainable. Moreover, given that any learner centeredness can thrive in both of those circumstances, community engagement is not simply better, it is the only way to ensure quality in medical education and not a hermit-like relationship with the rest of the world. Student centeredness reflects a cult of the individual where it's not just that everyone should have prizes, but they must have prizes. While many social reforms were hard won in the fight for a more civilized and inclusive society, an obsession with the individual at the cost of the collective has become a sickness of Western societies. Our learners do not need and certainly do not benefit from the hidden curriculum of self-obsession, and participation in community is what defines us and allows us to grow and become what we can. Student centeredness simply encourages navel-gazing and narcissism, and it fails to encourage a meaningful social role for a future physician. To be a physician, of course, is to join a community, and to practice is to serve one or more communities and to sustain them. Why then would you want to encourage our future healers and leaders to be the princes and princesses that they could so easily become in the absence of the community context? How can you, in good consciousness, conscious, not acknowledge the importance of community and health professional training? On Wednesday, I spoke about the crisis of moral agency and the erosion of the principle of first do no harm. Our responsibility as professionals is to do no harm or mitigate harm if it cannot be avoided. Student centeredness can do harm by distracting from the learner's vocation, by encouraging a sense of entitlement, by neglecting patients and societal needs, and by undermining the development of professional identity focused on others. Indeed, it's one of the most challenging aspects of health professions education when graduates are free to pursue whatever interests them or whatever they can get away with. Not a good idea. A greater focus on community needs challenges this somewhat selfish stance as it requires future positions to pursue their careers informed by community needs and wishes. We do this in education, security, government and industry. Why don't we think this is appropriate in medicine? Now this is not to say we should ignore the student as an individual with needs. We should acknowledge the challenges of learning, self-care. A physician, after all, needs to be able to take care of themselves, to be able to take care of others. But we know that it is community and learners, and learners in community that builds resilience. Self-absorption does not. Health professions education is markedly different from mainstream higher education. Our focus is on health outcomes, not on the self-actualization of the learner. Not only does this cast our work in a very different ethical flame, it requires a resetting of the moral compass for each and every participant to one of service. To encourage a supremacy of self over the other is a particular problem of this modern age. The current public fascination with zombies and the zombie apocalypse <laughs> reflects a widespread attention of the young from the other in society. On the other hand, the popular dinner and pastime of selecting your optimum team to survive the zombie apocalypse <laughs> encourages community engagement and collaboration. <laughs> to encourage greater individualism is to bring the zombie apocalypse closer. Without community engagement, we cannot survive the coming apocalypse that the xenophobic fear of the other will bring. That we are meeting and debating as a community today simply emphasizes the centrality of community engagement at all levels. The debate medium is our message, and through your participation today, each one of you is confirming the motion that this House believes that community engagement should replace student-centeredness in medical education. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Elloway. And finally, we have opponent, Professor Sarah Strasser. Madam, you will have five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, friends, students, and countrymen, lend me your ears. Kahia! <laughs> could all the community, uh, could all the people who would do the uh, conference on the move stand up and show people what individualized experiential learning in a community engaged process sounds like? Kahila! Again! Kahila! Again! Kahila! Yeah. Okay. 
order. <laughs> Be quiet, you. Who likens medical school to an army? Who says most of the world is uh, Western when in fact it's Eastern? Be gone. Shame. <laughs> who is calling who the delusionist here? Roger, piffling points. I mean, for God's sake, come on. Let's get real here. This motion is about medical education. This motion is about replacing student-centeredness for community engagement. To what end? Let common sense prevail. There is no need for academic papers or quotes for justification. My esteemed colleagues promoting community engagement for replacing student-centeredness they are confusing the means with the end. Community engagement is just part of the essential equation. Community engagement brings alive the context. Community engagement may direct, steward, spearhead, contribute, provide the long-term view, or just keep the bastards honest. But without student-centeredness, the risk is a production line style of producing health professional graduates and lack of the diversity of learners that we need to lead and discover that is essential for the health system and the health of all peoples uh, yeah, to yeah. progress. I have to tell you, even communities would see this as a nonsense. What is a learning organisation without a focus on learners? Who in this room does not consider themselves a learner? Here, here. Please stand up. <laughs> in fact, all students stand up. All learners stand up. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> God, I've only got five minutes. <laughs> I put on my little white coat today and I thought, geez, why didn't we then make them a little bit more fashionable and functional? Uh, because I suddenly thought, gosh, this is it. You know, of course I'm a student, I'm a, an ongoing learner. And I would not want to enter into a program that didn't have my interest at heart. Here, here. So, unfortunately, uh, if we take student centeredness out of the equation, I don't think we'll have any students. Um, Roger. I know what Roger thinks, right? Roger! What's this? You're about to tell me anyway. Too right. I'd have to say, because there's no one after me, I can go on for as long as I like. But our children, our children, our children were very keen to come today because they don't often see us argue. <laughs> I know what he thinks, I can tell you. And student-centeredness is not about brats. It is not about uh, students getting uh, what they want all the time. They are not, quote, Roger Strasser, Dean of the Northern Ontario School of Medicine. Student-centeredness does not mean that they are always right. Okay? It is part of learning. So, um, I think that uh, being student-centred to me is about supporting diversity and the individual learner. It's about respect, trust, truth, honesty, compassion, love and hope, which actually reflect the seven grandfather uh, recommended, uh, wishes <laughs> for the modern terms. And that Learning, so that's, uh, that's the word I was looking for. And that uh, experiential learning, which involves community engagement, uh, is the way. So, for all those who recognise themselves <laughs> as learners, Kahila! Yeah, yeah. Respect the community. Bela, Bela, remove this woman. <laughs>
took my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Debaters, you have done an excellent job of presenting your case. I, I, I thank you and I applaud you. <laughs> the motion is about to be set before you, the voting public, and you have this opportunity to ask questions and make comments, to which the panel may respond. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Please stand, state your name. Speak very loudly, thank you. Ken Connolly. I'm uh, somewhat uh, bemused by this debate. How did uh, people come to the conclusion that community engagement and student centeredness were opposites? <laughs> Strasser, you have one minute. Okay, thank you, Ken, for that comment. And that is exactly my point, that it is not one or the other, it has to be both. And that it is the means of bringing the context alive through community engagement that students learn, but it is the learning that has to be student-centred to make a difference. That is the self-actualisation that my colleague here, Paul, uh, was talking about. It is the kahila, if you remember our learning from the community engagement. Um, and That's the most sensible comment I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Order in the house. Order in the house. Common sense prevails. So, so one proponent would have the opportunity to respond for one minute. Yeah, so may, may I just point out that this is actually the story of my life. <laughs> Sarah has the last word, <laughs> but it doesn't mean she's right. Can you get physical? <laughs> Clearly, the physicians that we need, the doctors that, that the people need, are ones who are, who are focused on their health needs and responding to their health needs. This is the sacred pr privilege of medicine, and yes, in order to help the students to learn to do that, we need to focus on the students. So it's not completely one or the other, but the, the priority is a focus on the community. Active community engagement. <coughs> community engagement is the way of the future in medical education. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Other questions or comments from the audience? Yes, sir. Please stand, state your name, speak loudly. Thank you, I'm Ross Lawrenson. Um, the issue around um, student fees is a very um, uh, topical one. So student fees have led us to believe that uh, medical education is a private good. Um, and we advertise in New Zealand, for instance, that if you become a doctor, you will get more income than any other profession that you go into at university. So if we move to community engaged medical education, should we abolish student fees? <laughs> Would an opponent like to speak first? I couldn't put it uh, more clearly that, uh, that in our societies where uh, there is in incredible student debt, uh, that if we don't take the, the needs of individual students very, very seriously and as our highest priority, then we're not respecting them. And in that way, how can we then expect them to respect their community who they are being trained to serve? Um, so it's a, it's a, if you like, a sort of stepladder <coughs> approach. Uh, and I don't see in most countries governments rushing to take over the funding of medical education. Uh, in fact, it seems to be going the other way. Now, that could be a different argument, a different debate. Uh, ought medical education be entirely publicly funded or, uh, or should it, um, in most countries, remain 
uh, essentially a, a private gift. Um, that's a, a totally different debate. But very good point. So I agree that, uh, that it's an excellent question, but it's predicated on does this, the existing system represent the best of all possible worlds? And I reject that Panglossian assertion that this is the way we need things to be. So there are two key issues here. One, if, you, if we continue to work in the way the system is currently configured, then we continue to ensure that only elites get into medical school and are successful. If you look at the model that practice at the Northern Ontario School of Medicine, and actually at many of the schools and people in this audience, the community is a way to ameliorate this massive social inequity of access by raising funds to support students from disadvantaged backgrounds, to address the social economic status issues that create a block for anybody to realize a career in medicine. So that communities are the answer to this and not just a way of saying, well, it's the way it is, so what can we do? More importantly, it is the community who can affect change that says, we don't need a model that's always based on markets, but we can look at a model that is based more on social justice. and can look at the moral and ethical basis for access and cont continuity into the professions and not purely a fiscal one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Are there additional questions or comments from the audience? You, the voting public. Yes, sir. Please stand. State your name. Speak loudly. I'm Paul Amazon from the University of Sherbrooke of Quebec. Um, we talk with my gray hairs. Okay, my experience as a medical educator, as, a, uh, as a, an expert in medical education and pedagogy, also, as a medical educator, trying to look at community, and I think it's interesting to say to to understand that you know medicine is a person in need consulting <coughs> another person who commits, profess to need the first person and engage him him or herself to do so. Education is a person, a student who you know, in need of competence who consult another person of the teachers, who then also these the teachers commit to support the development of competence and to do so. So in fact, there's a lot of, you know, I think that community, or yeah, community, uh, community engagement is more regarding a professional identity or professional development in me medicine, while student-centeredness is more education, okay? And we need, we need certainly both, as we said, okay. What I would suggest, and in fact, I would say, my gray hairs would say, 40 years ago, we're talking about community orientation, community-based <laughs> education, and then now we're talking about community engagement, and it's a very interesting world, world because it's the engagement of the community and engagement of the students. What I would challenge the people of the medic of education is, 40 years ago, we're talking about active, active participation of the student. And then we talked about student centeredness now. And in fact, why don't we should not talk about student professional development? And why should we, should we not use the term student engagement? Engagement for their own education and engagement for the population. Thanks. Professor Woody. Uh, Certainly your analogy between the doctor-patient relationship and the, and the student-teacher relationship I think is a, a, a very valid one. Uh, and your, the, uh, the comparison that you, you draw between uh, community engagement and student engagement in terms of participation in the process. Uh, so community engagement comes out of a uh, participatory democracy movement. And that movement would actually suggest that the problem in community engagement is actually community representatives. Uh, because the jewel in the crown of participatory democracy is not community activists, but it's randomly picked juries who have the ability to interpret the law and are actually outside of parliament. So they're there, if you like, a, uh, a, a tether or a guard against the elected 
democracy. There's the participatory democracy, elected democracy. And some would suggest that the, where community engagement and community orientation and all that has gone wrong is because of the agendas of the community activists rather than the, the participation of the community in the same way as some would argue in, that uh, the participation of students is often uh, harmed because of student activists as opposed to the bulk of student participants. Uh, so the agendas can get warped uh, by the, the views of a few. Uh, so I think you're right in, in drawing those parallels between uh, society and between uh, education and perhaps what we think is uh, are the, the, the gems in actual fact are not uh, are actually uh, harmful to uh, to the success of engagement both for students and for the community. So, so I'm wondering if I heard a different comment from the same person uh, to, uh, compared to my uh, my esteemed colleague uh, down the way. What I thought I heard was that that. Uh, uh, active student participation should be developed uh, now to, to student engagement, which of course is the obverse of community engagement. And also over the last 40 years there's been a growing focus on professionalism and, and uh, graduating doctors who are, who are true professionals uh, and, and very much are holding to uh, the original, the, pr the privilege of, of medicine bestowed by society, which I, which I mentioned earlier. You know, they say it takes a village to raise a child, so it takes a community, multiple communities, Excuse me, he, he's making an argument outside his five minutes. <laughs> I'm responding to the comment from our esteemed member of the, of the, of the public here. Uh, and agreeing with him that community engagement with student engagement is the way of the future for medical education. Thank you. Thank you. So, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, we, we will stop the question and uh, uh, period at this point, and I'm going to uh, invite each panelist to have one minute to summarize their cogent, most cogent arguments. I will at this point reread the motion, following the panel having one minute each person to repeat their arguments. I will again repeat the motion, and we will take the vote. The motion is, community engagement should replace student-centeredness in medical education. We will start at that end with Professor Elloway and work our way one minute each to respond. Thank you, Madam Chair. I will take less than one minute. Humans without communities are animals. If you want to survive the zombie apocalypse, you will vote in favour of the motion. Thank you. <laughs> Professor Strasser. Yeah. All, all tonight? Okay, Sarah. Sarah next. I'm not going next. You're going next. It's the I'm last the word last thing minute. again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will take far less time as well. Uh, communities without individuals are like animals. They are the mob. And who wants to get ruled by the mob? So, so just stop and reflect for a moment. What kind of physician do you want to be looking after you? A doctor who, who knows and understands you as a person, is focused on responding to your health needs the, in your home, family, community setting? Or do you want a self-absorbed, self-serving brat who's just just doing what it takes to have the income to enjoy sailing and playing the stock market and living the high life. I think the choice is very clear. Community engagement is the future of medical education. Thank you. And finally, Professor Strasser. You know, and you know, but that's bullshit. <laughs> A learning organisation without a focus on learners is on a downhill course. They are not zombies, they are learners, they are individuals. And a well-rounded graduate 
fit for purpose and diversity of purpose is what we achieve through student-centeredness. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, in final, uh, I, I actually I would say vote, pa vote passionately, vote to say no. This motion is about replacement. We're not into the replacement. It is that community engagement is a means to an end, and the end is the successful... Point of order, can't we write the motion? <laughs> yeah, shocking. Yeah, yeah. Kahila! <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the case has been put before you, and having heard the case put before you, we now put the motion to a vote. The vote will proceed as follows, because it must be precise. We must know precisely what the vote is. It will be what we call a stand-down Trump vote. So I am going to soon read the motion and ask those in favor of the motion to stand, and then you will count yourselves down. One, two, three. The motion is, community engagement should replace student-centeredness in medical education. One more time. Community engagement should replace student-centeredness in medical education. Those in favor of the vote, please stand. abstained from the vote altogether. Those who abstained, please stand. Those indecisive men <laughs> is defeated resoundingly. The motion is defeated. 
So, I will uh, ask at this point that we thank our venerable uh, uh, panel and uh, uh, debaters. They have presented the case well. You have voted clearly. I uh, thank you very much. There is a few minutes left for further discussion, if you wish. Um, but uh, uh, the coffee break will be served at uh, 10 o'clock, and the next session will begin. Do please come back for lunch and hear the student presentation. Thank you. And you can do that. <laughs>